Hey everyone, Shane here. I just wanted to run through a quick um, practice problem for stock valuation coming up here um, for the next quiz in order to prepare you a little bit and to cover up, a, um, to clear up a couple things that I may not have made clear enough to other students. So here we go. Um, these problems are seem very complex, but um, I'm going to try to break it down for you real quick. Okay, CSUCI just uh, CSUCI Inc. just paid a one dollar dividend, which is expected to grow by ten percent for the next three dividends. After that, we expect the dividend growth to slow to three percent per year forever. You require a five percent return. Find the price today. Okay, so we know that uh, any asset is um, evaluated off of based off of the future uh, the present value of all future cash flows right and that holds true to any the, and the valuation of any asset there is and that's including stocks because stocks do have uh, cash flow and that is considered dividend payments now dividend payments don't usually follow such a, a constant steady uh, thing like this uh, usually they're just determined uh, by the company but in this case it looks like we have a dividend schedule set up so we'll be able to derive the price out of these um, these dividends so let's look so the first thing I want to draw your attention to uh, just paid so we so that already happened we did we are not going to get that first one dollar dividend just just let that be known but for the uh, sake of the video I will I will write it in. I'll just write it here. So this is going to be D0, okay? It's $1. So D1, in that case, is going to be what? D0 times the growth rate, which we have at 10% right now. 1 plus 0 0.10, okay? And then you got $1.10. Okay, that's easy enough. Now D2, it's going to be D1 times 1 plus 10%. And D1 is just $1.10. So we know, let's see, $1.10 times 1.1. It's going to be 1.21. For dividend two, and then we have dividend three. Finally, we have uh, that 1.21 times 1.1, and that's going to give us 1.331. Okay, so there are your first three. Uh, or should I say four-year dividends right there. So if you want to look at the number line, we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So we're looking right here, actually. This is where we are in time. This dividend, D0 of $1, that's already been paid out. We don't get that. So we do not get this. Uh, the first dividend we're going to be seeing is this one, second, third. Okay, so we got dollar ten cents as a cash inflow, a dollar twenty one cents as a cash inflow in year two, and then a dollar and about thirty three cents as a cash inflow from year three. Okay, so now there are two different types of cash flows that we get from from uh, stocks. Um, there's of course the dividends and we have finally the only real way that we make money off of stocks is to sell them, right? So how do we find out if we know, if we can assume at least that now that uh, the uh, dividend growth has slowed to 3% per year past year three, um, how are we going to find the present value at year three in order to get the price at which we would sell it? Well, this is how. We're going to use the constant perpetual growth model. Okay, so the, the constant perpetual growth model, what it does is 
we're going to start using this new rate, which is the 3%, and we're going to plug it in for G. And what that's going to allow us to do is essentially, just like we calculated perpetuities, um, uh, we're going to calculate these. So now what we're going to do is still in, in uh, time period 3, we're still in time period 3, I want everyone to know that, um, we want to find the price of period 3. And what we know from the dividend, uh, the uh, constant perpetual growth model is that is that uh, we can write this two ways. We can write this. I wrote it one way. This is also equal to just the formula. It, if I wanted to put um, um, p of zero equals d of uh, so dividend one, which is what this is, right? In any situ any given situation, the next year's dividend. So this is time zero and then time plus one, so dividend one. So we know that any um, that any uh, that the price of at p at uh, at this point in time right now is going to be equal to next year's dividend. So we can get to next year's dividend just like we did here and here and here by using one plus g. Now there are of course two growth rates here. We have the 10%, we have the 3%, right? So what we did to get to these next ones was just the same thing over and over just with the 10%, right? So I want you to remember that and look at this. The price in period zero is equal to the dividend or the cash flow in the, the next following period over your required rate of return minus the rate of growth of this cash flow. And that, that is a that is a way of, of calculating a perpetuity of cash flows, essentially continuing on from this point. So what we're going to be able to do, if we're looking for P, um, uh, if we're looking for price at year three, we're going to be able to take, so what, we, what it would ask us to normally do is project to, to dividend four, right? So it would be dividend four, which we don't know yet, dividend 4 over k minus g. Well, dividend 4 we know is just d uh, dividend 3 times the growth rate, right? Well, the growth rate right now from uh, on from period 3, remember? The growth rate after that, so right here is where we see for the next three dividends. So we have finished that third dividend and we finished the growth of 10% right here. Now, now that we're going to, um, even though we're still solving in for the price at, at period three, we still need to project one uh, dividend ahead. So we need to find D4. Now D4 is super easy because we have that new growth rate because that continues on past this point right here. We know that, the, that it's going to be 3% down and forever. While it was 10% here, it will be 3% forever past year three. So we have the last known dividend, which is 1.331. 1 We're going to multiply that by 1 plus 0.03 to find out what the dividend in the dividend in year four will be. So that's an easy one, 1 1.331 times 1.03, and that gives us 1.3709. Okay, so that is D4. This is D4. It's irrelevant to us because we're only observing through um, uh, T of 3, but this is for our calculation purposes what we will be plugging into the top right here. So we got that number and then on the bottom we got K minus G. Okay. Well, what's K? We, uh, well, we require 5%. 
And this growth rate here for these dividends is 3%, right? So we get a whopping 0.02%. And then we'll take this, this fourth dividend here, 1.3709. And simply divide it by 0.02. And when we do that, we get an answer of 68. Point, I'd say about $68.55. And yeah, 55 cents. Okay, so what is that number? We did a lot of work to find it, but we need to define what it really is. So this number here, remember this is still all at period three. We're still all right here. We have the dividend for this period already though. We have $1.33 like we found right here. So what is this number? Well, this number is as if you could say, well, if I'm gonna sell my stock here at year three, then I know that the price I'm going to be able to get for it at year three is $68.55 in future value terms, in year three terms. That's an important key to remember because this seems like you're kind of like double dipping almost. And I'll show you what I mean because we're not quite finished. We're almost there, uh, almost there, but not quite. So we know we have to discount these dividends, right? By the uh, by, your required rate of return of five percent. So we know that here, one point oh five. Discount that, one point oh five, to the second power. For term two, and then we have one point oh five. To the third power for the third um, year, and, but we also have this. Now, what are we going to do with this? Because I, I, it seems in a weird way, I mean, we did use this 0.05 in the denominator. It looks like we are discounting, that, like we already did the discounting. But actually, I made the same mistake. That is not the case. What we're going to have to do is take the number, we already used this just to find, this is just to find the price at which you would be able to sell this security at year three in three years. Now, what does that mean? Well, we still have to discount it back three years to get P of zero. See this, this could be looked at as, well, it is P of three, right? But we don't want, we don't want anything in terms of, so we can't just add this in. We don't want anything in terms of, uh, in future terms at all. We have to convert this back to P of zero. The only way to do that is to discount it in the period at which it lies, which is third period. So we will effectively add it to this last dividend payment here as a value that is discounted. So we're gonna go 68, 55, and we're just going to discount it again by the same term. Remember 1.05, it's still in the same period. So we're still gonna discount it by 1.05 to the third power. And that can be seen as, here's a random, uh, here's a little small cash flow from year one, small cash flow from year two. And then at year three, I'm going to get that 1.33, that, um, that small dividend, but I'm also gonna sell the stock too. So its entire value is gonna go up and uh, is going to probably go for about um, $68.55 in future dollars. So we wanna discount this back and everything else appropriately back to zero because that's where we're that's where we need to be once we get all, that in all of those terms it's just simple addition from there you know just uh all you got to do is just add them after you evaluate these separately um some people just like to uh for this last one you could really just um literally just add these two numbers together kind of and then omit one of these fractions here so you don't have to do it twice, you know, you could just, and because you're dividing by the same exact number anyways. And what that will do, uh, let's see what it is. Here, 
plus 1.33 divided by, well, you know what, this calculator doesn't even have the uh, right functions on it. But anyways, you guys can do simple addition. I'm not going to bore you with that. That is how you execute the constant perpetual growth model while using a, um, a uh, multi-stage um, dividend growth problem like this. There we go.